Hey guys, CG Crafted here. Today I'm gonna talk about the new 1.1 release of Ultimate Sky. It is a ton of improvements and new features. The most important new feature is that I turned it into an add-on. The workflow has changed, so after you download Ultimate Sky, instead of the old way of going into file and pending everything manually, or starting your scene from the base file, you will be able to install it as an add-on, and then you can add Ultimate Sky to any scene, anywhere, anytime. So how to do it? I will show it in a moment. You can come over here and click on Preferences, go into the Add-ons tab, I'm already in it by the way, and uh, click on Install. You will have to locate the zip file that you downloaded and click on it to install. Since I already have them installed, I will skip this tab. I'm basically at the phase where I've already done all of this, and that's why if I search for Ultimate Sky, it will come up. To enable the add-on, you just have to click on the checkbox and it will work. Now to add a sky, come to the panel on the right side by pressing N, and Ultimate Sky will be on the Ultimate Shaders tab. As you can see, the add-on has a sophisticated UI, and I'm very happy about this because this is my first Android in the world. Just because it's my first Android doesn't mean it's bad or something, I made sure everything works fine and professionally. I will show you. So you have multiple options to add a sky with all features, or to add only the light version, which I will be using for most of the video since it's faster in Vport if I'm using EV. So let's add it. You even have cool little notifications about what happened. It says the sky was added and indeed uh, there are the lamps for EV. So let's see it. Yeah, this is it. Everything's working fine. Now, what if you want to use it in EV? You could use the traditional way of setting up the scene from here, then turning on the sun and moon lamps, then setting up compositing, yeah, that will take a while. Especially if you change your mind and want to render with circles in the end. Luckily the second biggest new feature is that you can use the auto setup provided by the add-on. Click on Eevee and it will instantly set up the scene in a way that uh, suits Eevee. See, it automatically turns on the lamps for Eevee and it does a lot of other things. So now let's set it up for cycles. And the add-on instantly turned off the sun lamps. I find it's really helpful on scenes when I use both TV and cycles, although I mostly use cycles. But there are other things that changed. Go into the compositing tab. Here are the compositing nodes that the add-on automatically generates. It uses the glare node for bloom and the denoising node is also set up perfectly. I believe by default nodes aren't even enabled in compositing, but you don't have to worry about that because the add-on will do that too before generating the compositing nodes. It also sets up render passes for the nodes. Since bloom and a lot of other stuff works differently in EV, it requires a different node setup. So let's go back to the add-on and optimize the scene for EV again. Let's see the new node setup it generates. Yep, it's pretty different and simple. It also turns on bloom effect for Eevee with the best settings that will work with the shader. So what other thing is new? Well, the sky gradients were swapped, so now this add-on has one of the smooth skies. It used to have a stronger build gradient effect. With this it looks very natural now, although on the recording it's not uh, as visible because of compression or color profile, I guess. This is a very important improvement for realism. Another important new feature is the ability to control the EV sun and moon lighting directly inside the shader. Before the update this was only possible in cycles. For EV you had to click on the sun lamp and do it from there, which was less intuitive. And with this, Eevee now supports sunlight in colors. It used to be only white, now it changes color at the sunset just like in cycles in real life. It has a default slightly yellowish tint too, just like in cycles. Some smaller improvements were made in the UI, like redesigning the quality controls, now it goes from 0 to 10. For that we need to change to Ultimate Sky Pro since light doesn't have this feature. To load the new sky, just delete the props, then rename this sky and unlink it. The add-on will let you load the new sky. An alternative way will be to only delete the props, unlink the sky, then save the file and revert. This is because Blender keeps the unlinked sky in the file no matter what you do until you reload it. I will talk about this in a little bit uh, more detail at the end of the video. Ok, here's the pro version with the clouds. Here's the quality control, see? It makes more sense than steps. A little improvement. 
Same with the horizon level feature, you can actually remove it completely and push it down or push it up, which will delete everything, clouds, sun, and stuff like that. And here's a more important new feature, bloom controls for EV and Cycles. You don't like the default settings, then change this slider and it will reduce or increase the bloom effect. And yeah, there's no bloom effect in Cycles too, it's not a real bloom, the compositing still adds an actual bloom, but it's mostly for preview purposes, it looks better than this, uh, this without any plume. And there are some experimental fake flares for you, but they will be hidden behind objects, so their usability is limited for now. One of the new features I like in the add-on is that you are able to revert the settings to default values. So let's say I accidentally messed up the settings and created this mess, then I can simply revert the settings with this uh, button and it will look great again. Okay, these were all the new features and if you want to know more about the unlinking procedure in Blender then don't leave yet. So I mentioned it's not advised to add more skies and the add-on is designed to prevent you from doing it, just like a lot of other add-ons. But with the renaming method you can still add multiple instances of Ultimate Sky. Let's rename this sky back to Ultimate Skylight. Now we have two skies and the add-on recognizes it and tries to warn you. This is mostly a beginner friendly soft log by the way, because if you are new to Blender then you might be wondering why some features are broken or why you can't remove the sky completely completely until you close the file. The sky actually works quite nicely, even if you have multiple versions or instances of it, but then the reset settings feature of the add-on will be broken since it has no idea which sky settings you want to reset. With multiple skies it won't know which sun and moon lamps it should automatically set up, so that feature won't be usable either. But if you want multiple instances of the sky and you don't want to use the add-ons features in your scene, maybe when you want to experiment with the skies, but you download them for the first time, then you can do it by this renaming method. Just remember the add-ons features won't work properly, but the shaders will be fine. Also, if you rename them back to their original name, then they will work fine again. So that's all for this video, thanks for watching.